Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now, I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this Photoshop Elements text effects video, we'll be doing some cartoony style text. This kind of thing that you'll see frequently on channel headers over on YouTube or on the other video sites or possibly as a header in Facebook groups, things like that, just something a little more fun. And it's a good starter kind of project, kind of gets you into using the different standard text tools here inside of Photoshop Elements. Now, let's just take a quick look at the way this thing is arranged. We're then going to go ahead and start from scratch and build a new one of these. Looking at our layers on the right hand side, notice we have one layer right there, text layer. This has a gradient fill in it. There's a drop shadow. Of course, there's a bevel and emboss on that, and there's a warping on the text, a text warp. Pretty straightforward, though nothing too dramatic. Here, here we have FX on this one. And in our FX, we have the drop shadow right there. We have a little bit of an outer glow applied to it. Bevel and emboss, of course. And a little thin stroke, that's a little black outline right around there. So they have a few of those things. So again, fairly straightforward layer. Above that, we have my name here. Notice now we, we have these overlapping letters. Now this is a special thing that we have to do. Let's see if I can bring up this other layer here underneath and hide that one. We begin like this. This is a regular type here inside of elements. And after we create our type layer, we're then going to cut this apart into individual letters and then move those letters around to give us this look. So this is kind of a later stage on this. It takes several stages to get to that point. And again, we have some fill happening in here. and We have some drop shadow and so forth. Nothing too dramatic. Coming down our list, let me just hide those. We have our, our background right here. This background, I don't have the steps shown over here. This is, has been collapsed in this file. But this is all made from clip art and graphics and so forth here right inside of Photoshop Elements. So we'll be building something like this. I'll show you how we came up with this kind of a basic look. Applying some styles in here onto different bits of graphics and so forth, some regular artwork. And that's all using the graphics content and some effects that are built right into Photoshop Elements. So again, real straightforward. Now above this, to soften things up, I have a gradient fill layer here, just kind of a rainbow-ish gradient happening in here. And then that fill layer is screened using a blending mode right here, screened on top of the image below, just, just softening things down a little bit. So again, all pretty straightforward, nothing too dramatic about this. Okay, let's go ahead and we're going to start building this whole thing now from scratch. And we'll start off with making this background or making something similar to this background. I won't be doing exactly the same thing, but I'll be using the same tools. And I'll show you how I built this background image. So we'll start off then with a brand new file. I'm first going to go over here and just select all. There we go, edit copy. And what that does for me is it gives me the size of this file. So you can make the new file exactly the same size. So file, new blank file. And it automatically sets that at the clipboard size right there. Just a fun little trick to do. There we go. So this is now the exact same size as that one. If I brought this up to 100%. Let's just zoom into 100% and pull out. 
See, there we go. Same size file. So that's all that one little step is. I'm just going to minimize this, get that out of our way for now. And we'll start working in here and bringing in some imagery to create that background look. We'll start off by bringing our graphics up. Give it a second to load in. There we go. And there are two areas here. We have graphics and shapes. Both of these can be used to put in some of those cartoon images. There's the airplane and the apple. I actually had both of those in there. We also can look for backgrounds. Let's just bring our backgrounds up here. And then you can choose an, a nice background here. I'll just grab that one, drag it on. Give it a second to load in. And there's our background. Let's go back here to some graphics. Let's put on just a couple of graphics and we'll put on a couple of shapes. There's one of the ones that I used. Just drag that in. Give it a second to load in. There we go. And then we can just resize that. Just like that. So there's one. We'll come down. We'll find something else. I used that cartoon cat. See if we can find the cartoon cat. He's down in here somewhere. And just scrolling on down until we find the cartoon cat. Actually, I used that as well. Let me just pull that up. There we go. So the cartoon cat must be further up the list instead of down the list. So I'll scroll the other direction here so we can find our cartoon cat. There it is. Bring that in. And just, you know, resizing and repositioning, whatever. Just using different things out of the graphics. Let's go over here to our shapes. And with the shapes, I used shapes and also some effects on these shapes. I'll just do just a couple of these. I'll just bring the apple in here. There we go. And I'll bring an airplane in there. Now on these shapes, this is just grabbing the, for the current foreground color and adding that to the foreground color. But we can go over here to Effects, let that load in, click on Styles, and there's all kinds of stuff that you can use on these different effects. Like glass button styles, here's some complex. I'm just going to drag that onto that airplane. There we go, that's one of the ones that I used. And you know, neon looks, plasticky kind of looks. Let's just drag that onto the apple. There's kind of an apple. So you can use those for instant artwork just by applying some of these different styles. It's just that easy to do. Just drag on your graphic and then apply a style to it. So that's what I did. I just grabbed a, you know, several of these things and just stuck them in here to create that background. Okay, let's now bring back up that other file and we'll just use the existing background that I've already finished on that file and let's just find that there we go and let's go to our layers and let's deselect that get that out of the way I'll just grab this layer and just drag it over here So there's the background, and you saw how we made this. Now, the rest of these other shapes, those are just simply graphics that I dragged in and didn't apply any effects onto those. It's just kind of a mix of those items. So there we go. And I'll just get rid of this other stuff. We no longer need that, so we can just delete that. And we'll leave that as our background layer. Okay, the next thing we had in here was a gradient fill layer. And we'll put that in front of our background, just kind of lightening up the background. We're going to apply fill layer. Let's go up here to layer and fill layer gradient right there. Choose OK. It then gives you a gradient fill layer. There it is. Now we can choose from all kinds of different gradients in here for this fill layer. So I can you know, choose this one, for instance, and bring this gradient in. 
You can scale your gradients, make them you know, different sizes. You can reverse the gradient, just like that. And you have different shapes, the radial, the angle, the reflected, the linear. On the linear, you can even change the direction. So there are all kinds of those gradients that you can bring in here. Let me just pull this box way up here. And then over here, you can come in and you can, you know, fuller out these things or even create a new gradient. Just like that. Then if you click on the gradient itself, you can come in and actually modify that gradient as well. So you can, you know, be real, real specific on exactly how you want this gradient to behave. Click on these little color stops and you can then choose new colors right here from your color stop. Let's say I wanted to have this thing just real pastel. I'm just going to choose some pastel colors that are kind of similar. I'm going to choose kind of just a, a light purple here. Let's come into here and just choose a There we go. And kind of a pastel blue. There are other colors here. If you click on the color box itself, you get the color picker. You can choose any color you want to from that. If you click on this little drop down, you get the swatches. And that's what I was aiming at there. Okay, let's just find a soft pastel. So you can say you can come in here and actually change your colors to any color that you want to use. Actually create or build a new gradient this way. So I want to have something just really soft. Click on one of these, click on the color section, and that brings up the color picker. I can then come in here and let's go way to the left and create real pastel colors. Just go to the top for full saturation, then pull really far to the left and get some pastel colors. So it's, it's that easy to come in here and actually create all new gradients. Just do the same thing. I'm going to finish this one off here as pastels. Just get real light colors. Again, I'm just grabbing it and pulling it way over here to the left hand side to me that the pastel versions of these exact same colors. On this we have, you know, no color left side, full color right side. So there's no saturation, full saturation. And at the top you have light and dark. So your pastels are going to be up in this area here. Your shades are going to be down in that area. And your gray tones, of course, on the left hand side. And let's finish off this last one here on the red. Just kind of drag that way over. There we go. So, based on the same gradient as we had before, just choose OK, we've just now made it real pastel. Once you have this, you can then actually blend that with the layer underneath by coming in here and then screening those two together, giving you a nice light background. I did it a little bit differently this time from our example, giving me a little bit lighter background. If you're not happy with the amount of color in here, you can either go back, double click here and you can redo your gradient if you want to you know, play around with that, or you can just bring the opacity down like this and control the amount of effect that's being applied until you have just the right look that you want. Now I want just a, a very light background so you can really see our text. So I'll leave that at an opacity of 95. Okay, so that finishes off the background. We can now move on and begin working on our text. I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller. I'm going to let's just dock that like that so we can see our options down below here. There we go. And let's go over here to our type tool. Now the font that I use was Show Card Gothic. Let me see if we can see it here on the list. There we go. Show Card Gothic Regular. And you can find this type of fonts like this on the internet. Just to search for that if you don't happen to have that one included. Oh, just lost it. Let's come back to the right one. There we go. And then not really sure why it keeps on going away from me there. There we go. So I did two layers, one for my name 
and then a second one for tunes. There we go. Now you can adjust the size on this you know, easily enough. Just grab the control handles here and you can change your size very easily. We can slant or change the positions here, rotate skew, all kinds of stuff you can do right on your text right there. The main thing I want to do though with the tunes is actually give this a type warp. And that's right there, create warped text. All kinds of fun stuff here. We'll be doing an arc on this one. And let me just quickly go through some of these things. We have an arc lower, arc upper, all kinds of fun different shapes you can use in here. But we'll stick with arc on this and let's just adjust the bend a little bit. Well, just a bit of a bend, just like that. And we'll choose OK. So there we go. That's the text. And we have a bit of a bend on it. Let's make this type just a little bit larger. I'll just pull the type size down. Notice you, can, you can really change your texture if you want to. It's just that easy to do. Now, on both of these, we're going to be applying some layer styles onto them to give them a nice look. And part of that will have to be done once this is finished. But if I apply a layer style here, let's see, layer layer style style settings we can do a basic bevel and a bunch and kind of see the effect there it's a slight bevel you can go down or up on the bevel and we can put on an inner or outer glow if you want to add some glow effects to this you can see there's that glow effect so there's a lot that you can do here with these We'll be doing just a little bit of a bevel on these and we're going to be doing a little bit of a drop shadow on them like that. And we'll also give them a thin stroke on the outside just so that we can really see our lettering. But we want to put some coloration in here first. So we're going to apply some coloration and then we're going to put in our bevel and emboss on these things. So for a color, we need to actually fill the lettering in here with a gradient. Now I don't want to do it on the letters themselves like we have here. So I'm going to be copying this layer and then rasterizing the layer. Then we'll fill the rasterized layer. Let me show you how to do this. It's just up a couple of steps to do this. So I'll grab this. I'll pull it up here to the new layer button like that. There's my copy. I can hide that one now. Right click over here where the name is and click on Simplify Layer. That thing gives me that as just a layer. Now above this, let's do a gradient layer. So we'll do Layer, New, Layer Gradient. Choose OK. Now it's above our text. You can see there. We'll just find something in here, some kind of a gradient. I'm going to do just something kind of like that this time. A little different than I did last time. I'll just do a bright gradient. But we're now going to take this. I'm going to simplify this layer. Right click, simplify. That gives it a, a gradient just on that layer itself. We're now going to put this into a clipping mask into our text. There are a couple ways of doing that. If you go up here to your layer, come down to create clipping mask, it actually just moves that right inside. As you can see, I can actually move my gradient around inside of my lettering. I can even change the gradient in here. So there's the control handles. And I can bring that gradient down and adjust the size of my gradient to get just the look that I want. So we'll do something kind of like, like that. There we go. Now, I can't begin to cut this apart because that's going to mess up my gradient. So what I need to do is to select these two layers, right-click, and merge layers. There we go. Now this is just one piece of artwork. We can now cut this apart and make separate layers for each one of these letters and then reposition those letters. Once that's done, then we can apply our layer styles. Let me just show you that real fast here. You have layers. 
layer style style settings so we then give it the bevel and emboss like that give it our, our bevel look in here and adjust the amount of the bevel on that to get that kind of a fun cartoony effect we can adjust the drop shadow so we'll be doing all of that stuff in just a minute but first I want to break this apart into individual pieces so let's take the lasso tool over here I like using the polygonal lasso tool and I'm just going to come in here and create a careful selection around each one of my letters. There's my first letter. We'll go up to layer new via cut. And that puts that G on its own new layer. There we go. Come back down here again. And I'll be doing this for each one of these letters. We can hide that G for a minute, make it a little bit easier here. And then just carefully go between the letters. And same thing, layer new via cut puts it on its own layer and we'll just continue to move on down the reason I'm hiding those is so I can easily select that left hand side without having to worry about that, that letter in the way okay layer new via cut hide that one come down again as you can see this process really goes pretty quickly not that difficult to do so we'll just finish off these letters in here and then we're going to move the letters around a little bit okay and we'll just come down and get the last bit I'll just leave those together and new via cut okay my letters are all now on their own layers so you can now take these and actually reposition and rotate these around you can change size if you want to so you can do whatever you want now on these things to just change the look a bit and make it look a little more cartoony and let's just do the G which is right there. I'll, I'll just kind of rotate that one. Let's make that one a bit a bit bigger. There we go. Okay, the last thing we want to do then is to apply our layer styles. I'll go up here to the G. Do layer, layer style, style settings. And a little drop shadow. Bring the opacity down so it's just kind of a light drop shadow. You can see it in behind right in there. And let's do our bevel effect. about like that I think is pretty good and maybe a little bit of an inner glow as well just to make the letters look a little more interesting there we go and then finally let's just, just collapse these things let's do a little bit of a stroke around that I think two points is pretty good and you can choose outside or inside on the stroke inside maybe a little bit cleaner so I'll do that one and choose OK so we now have placed those styles in here now if we right click right here where the name is you can come in here you can copy the layer style so I'll do that come down one layer right click paste layer style and I'll just come down each one of these layers right click paste layer style come down again right click paste layer style now pretty soon this is going to be going off my record area on the screen but you can see what I'm doing so it's just off screen but there you go same thing I'll just paste layer style so there it is there is the George's part of that let's now come down to the tunes part let's make this a little more exciting you know the hard part is already done that's that part up there this one's easier We'll be doing the exact same technique, except we won't be cutting them apart. There's no cut apart required on the tunes. But we do need to rasterize this layer. I always make a copy of my text layers first, just in case I want to go back and change them. So let's make a copy and hide the original. And then right click and simplify the layer. There we go. 
Let's create a gradient fill above this layer. So layer new, fill layer gradient. Choose OK. Let's pick that real. Right, well, maybe that's kind of fun. I'll use that one. There we go. We need to simplify that layer. Right click and simplify. There it is. Use a clipping mask on this one. Create clipping mask. Puts that inside of the text as you can see there. Now I'm on that gradient layer. So let's grab our control handles and I'll pull those handles in. Collapsing that gradient down, making it a lot smaller. Just get some more of that color showing in there. Get kind of a, a circusy color effect. There we go. Now we need to combine these two layers together. So hold the shift key down. So you can choose both of the layers. Right click over here where the names are and merge layers. They're now one layer. All we have left to do is put some bevel and emboss on this stuff and you know, a little bit of styling and we're we're done with this cartoon text. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Layer, layer style, style settings. Do a drop shadow and bring the opacity up just a bit. There we go. Be a little inner glow on that. We'll see how that looks in a second. And a little bit want to get the bevel kind of small on this one. There we go. And a little stroke and put the stroke inside so it stays nice and clean. And there we are. Let's just click on our background layer. So you can see that. So that's how you do the cartoon lettering. Let me just enlarge the view here a bit. Let's zoom in a bit too far. Go to my zoom tool. There we go. Just bring it up a little bit. So there it is, a little little rough on that zoom level, but yeah, there you go. That's how to do that cartoon text. We'll put that back to actual size and cleans up the edges of, the, of those lettering. So there it is. That's the cartoon text. And again, the, the real trick here, and the hardest part of the whole thing, or the two parts, is doing the gradient map and then, you know, not, not map rather, but the gradient layer and then using the clipping mask to put the gradient layer into the text. And then, of course, we cut the text apart into separate pieces up here. There you go. That is cartoon text. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.